Hello, everybody. What's going on? You are listening to the Approach Podcast. Uh, as always, we have a great guest uh, waiting for you today. Uh, before we get to that, how are you, Victoria? I'm really good. Thanks, Adam. How are you? Yeah, it's a beautiful week so far, huh? We are having a really, really good <laughs> week in the Approach. It's been a bit mad, but it, we are here for it. We're absolutely here for it. I, I was looking for a term. I want like some some... English term for like how like gangbusters is that like an English term like what's what are we doing right now <laughs> what is that term you just used gangbusters that's like when things are like going crazy so like what would be like a like an English term for that <laughs> what would be an English term for that we would just say I don't know we, what we would say you just I, said I, mad I, like things are going mad I don't think we say that yeah, too often over here we would say things are going mad things are going crazy yeah. things are a little bit out of control, but in a good way. <laughs> but but nothing nothing specific. Riding the wave. Yeah, we're just riding the waves of an awful lot of new members, which is very exciting. An awful lot of success, lots of exciting new developments. Ah, it, it's, it's a very exciting time. Yeah, very very exciting. I mean, uh, uh, we're we're blown away by how many people are not just joining the program, but obviously the success and and you know how everybody's being taken care of. I've been talking with our coaches quite a bit this week, and they're all just you know thrilled with all the the new members and helping yeah. everybody out. And you know, I don't know. I I guess it's you know sign of the times. I don't really know. I mean, obviously we're doing fantastic, and our business is growing. You know, month over month and year over year. But um, I think people are just finally getting it right. Uh, people are finally understanding how to you know figuring it out. The gym doesn't yeah. work, right? I think so. And I think a lot of the members that we've onboarded recently are really in the right place to sure. get started. Like mentally, they are just ready. They're like, I'm here. I'm ready to make a difference. And they are fully committing to the program, which makes a huge difference because, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Like we are here for people, but unless they're ready to commit themselves, you know, there's not a lot we can do. So I feel yeah. like all the members recently have just been ready and up for it and excited. And that's just made such a huge difference. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And again, we talk about this all the time. Like, do not join the program if you are not ready. I know people yeah. people don't like it necessarily when I say that they want kind of the, the coddling from the beginning. But I got to be the, the tough, the tough cop, so to speak, uh, yeah. you know, once before we get you in the program. No, but then once we get you in, you know, we, we hold your hand every step of the way. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. 100%. Uh, so without further ado, let me introduce Sharon. How are you, Sharon? I am good. It's early here, but um, it's only like 40 degrees. But we've got sunshine coming all day long. It might turn <laughs> spring later today. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So now you're in the Seattle area, which I was we were just talking about before we started this podcast here. I love the Seattle area. Um, I'm sure Victoria, you've seen, you've never been over there, but you've seen pictures of kind of what it's like. Um, yeah, it's very like woodsy open trails. Uh, it's just, and uh, you, you would, you would be in heaven over there. Victoria likes doing like trails and hiking and stuff like that. So, and camping and camping. I'm a, I'm a country girl. We have a camp van and we go away. We try and go away every other weekend, at least for one or two nights to somewhere remote where we can explore. So yeah, we're country people at heart yeah i think that's that's a lot of that over well i know there's you know seattle is big city too but for the most part everybody everybody likes their outdoors out there right sharon yeah there's lots of water and mountains and uh streams i've got the walk i do there's two little creeks on my walk so you know Nothing. it's yeah it, there's something about being outdoors that is just so refreshing and uplifting too i like to whistle at the birds and feed the dogs biscuits <laughs> there's uh there's apps literally for seattle trails like if you go to seattle there's like an app that you can get and just locate like thousands of different trails out there so so it's really neat yeah um but sharon i want to know more about what you do this is such uh an interesting thing that you kind of created for yourself now uh, please just go dive in. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and, and what you do. And I just think this is really exciting. And again, another important topic, I think, for our members, uh, because our members are, are, you know, ages between what, 45, 75 years old. And um, and just I'm not I'm not going to spoil it. You tell us what you're <laughs> all about, Sharon. Well, with what you were talking about together just before um, 
mind coming on made me think earlier this week I had this strong sense of asking people what more do they want out of life and like you say if they're not ready they're not ready but once you decide you want more out of life you go for it and um, it seems like we've gotten so, I kind of call it dumbed down about not following our dream and not, um, we we forget that life is supposed to be joyful. And um, so, you know, in retirement, I'm actually 76 and I brag about it. <laughs> I love it. I'm a behavioral scientist, a knowledge manager and a spark coach. So the what more I want to help you find is the inner, how to define your soul, your inner spark, what's, what's inside. When I started coaching school, the first thing we learned was uh, writing our essence statement. Well, essence, state, essence has gotten kind of a, a vogue term. Everybody's using it. And sure. yet it's what's inside of us that makes me unique from you and you. But the world's waiting for you to live your from your inside and your gifting. So I um in fact somebody told me yesterday that the the quite the statistics about how uh men especially they the trend is that you live only two years after you retire. Oh my gosh. Wow. Um, I, so that's, I, that's a huge statement there. That's crazy. It is. It, when I left Boeing, somebody had told me uh, about a year, I guess, before I left that um, it was people put off retiring because they know they'll be dead in three years, three. And is that just from being stagnant or what's, what's the kind of, what does that make up? Uh, you know, what's the the rules behind that? Well, it took me a while to kind of figure it out. But the conclusion I came to is that it might take three years for a couch potato to die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So people have all these aspirations to retire. They've been working their whole life and then and then that's it. And so you, you, what you're saying is if you don't have any goals, any plans, especially even more reason to have those when you get older, right? Yeah. In fact, my on my walk yesterday, um, a gentleman I stop and talk to every now and then, he was out um, power brushing. It's probably not brushing, but he was cleaning his fence with a power. Yeah. Fence. A pressure washer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, I thought, well, he's keeping himself busy. He's not a couch potato. I see him uh, often up here. uh I, I attend a tops take off pound sensibly meeting and he attends that same church. And I often see him puttering around the church in the yard and cleaning things or straightening things up. So he's not a couch potato. And somehow that hit me that that's how you stay busy in, in retirement. And somebody in my building here, I think he worked until he was nearly 80. Guys especially like to keep busy. And when there's nothing to do but purpose, you mentioned purpose, that is a big key. One of the things yeah. I've put together this last year, maybe 18 months, is a um, is a little ebook that helps you kind of start remembering what was it to eat like sure. to do. And um, it was something as simple as keeping a roundabout um, uh, gardening, you know, keeping it pretty, keeping it cleaned up. But it could also be as outrageous as touching the water in the seven oceans. Right, right, sure. I don't know how, how small or how big. Well, Victoria's got her own little garden there, so you're doing that right, Victoria. You're, you're, <laughs> you're set. You're set for life. <laughs> yeah, I'm just waiting for retirement to start gardening. I am all over that already. <laughs> um, yeah. So go ahead. Well, my goal is to impact 10% of the boomers to live from their dream and it will change the world. Now I, I'm, you know, I'm, as you're talking, I'm thinking here, and this is such a, an impactful thing. I, I'm you're, you're changing people's lives when they think their, their life is almost over, right? Like you're, you're giving them hope and purpose and they're, they're creating new dreams. I mean, it seems amazing. Yeah. Cause uh, 
after all, you know, you're when you're working, you're you're having to work for most of the time from your brain. You you know, get things done, get your schedule, get your all kinds of things to do. But in retirement, who tells us it's time to live from our heart? Mm -hmm. I started bouncing off the wall um, probably about four months into retirement. I'd gotten my Social Security lined up and my Medicare lined up and all that paperwork stuff. And then I thought, how do I know if I'm productive? There's no boss to please now. Sure. Oh, yeah. I get to live from my heart now. I'm the boss. I make these little art blocks. I don't think I have the one. Um, Uri is a misuse of imagination is this one, but I have one also that, oh, oh, yeah. Have you Sharon, I am a humongous quote person. I've done a quote every day for the last like 10 years. So what, what did that last one say? He has. Have you forgotten who you are? Have you forgotten who you are? Yeah. And just a, just a question like that, I'm sure it pokes a lot of a lot of thoughts. Well, you know, that is from the movie The Lion King. And is that yeah, right? Yeah, it is. That's where I got it from. And um, you, you know, in fact, I, what did I write? I guess a couple of days ago, the um, that you were probably pretty pretty outstanding when you're in you know grade school. Um, I actually skipped second grade, and I should brag about that more because <laughs> <laughs> pretty unusual. But um, the the things that you naturally did as you were in those young years up to 10, 12 years old um, are something that might, that can naturally flowing out of you. Sure. You know, if you sold Girl Scout cookies, you know, did you enjoy doing that? And why was that fun for you? Well, we forgot what fun or joy was as an adult. I mean, there are times are so dismal somewhat these days but um well yeah. i'm also thinking creativity too right we 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 start losing all our creativity you know as kids kids are always walking around being creative with everything they do you know whether it's playing with legos my son plays with legos every day and then you just lose that yeah yeah mm -hmm. the well i've gotten really focused this last year especially on loving myself in fact um, I don't know, up here, I have a, a sign of what I like to collect near death experiences. And what are the messages do they bring back? And um, I challenged myself here a couple of weeks ago is, can I love myself as much as God loves me? Whoa, that's a big no. question. And so every now and then I hug myself, you know, or I look myself in the eye. And, you know, the first time I did that, in really intentionally, I felt like I was looking at God. Now that sounds preposterous, but you know, I, okay. So what these near death experiences, I, I have imagined their experience standing in heaven with all the color and fragrances and, and flavors and animals and, sure. and uh, imagine it soaking into every cell of my body. And then say, how does that change here today? Yeah, we're we're all lacking, uh, I guess, a sense of reality <laughs> these days with the hustle bustle and things like that. We're we're all a little out of out of touch. Um, I know Victoria has some questions. I'm sure for you about all this stuff, Victoria. Yeah. Yeah, Sharon, it's so interesting because I think for so many of our members, um, like Adam said, they're not only their age, but also they're coming to us at a point where they're wanting to make changes in their life. And there's probably numerous things in their life that they're not happy with or that they want to change. So what would your advice be to them if there were sort of three top tips that you could give them to start trying to find that joy and that spark again? Well, the the way I, one of the ways I describe the essence is knowing yourself on the inside that you live from your values we don't talk much about values right it's it's a process of reflecting you know when the news comes on what's the things that makes you aggravated somebody needs to do something about that be you and, um, people say well i couldn't do take do that you know like when you're on vacation you often are you know, watching the fire burn or looking at the ocean, there'll be a small voice that talks to you and, and it might scare you or it might 
make your heart sing, you know? But um, to actually, the creativity starts with being obedient to that little voice that's coming uh, naturally to you and responding. If I One of my blocks says, um, you'll know the next step once you take the first step. Sure. sure. You don't need to know how to get there. I, I'm going to steal that one from you, Sharon. I like that one quite a bit. Um, you know, one thing you you did just mention is values. And, and I think you're right. I, I don't think a lot of people or households do talk about values. It's actually something that we talk about quite a bit in our house. Uh, we talk about integrity, like everything kind of resorts back to integrity in our house. Like even if like siblings are fighting or something like that, you know, we, we, we kind of bring up the word integrity pretty often because uh, I think everything kind of stems from that. Like were, were, were your actions, you know, did they, did they, were they full of integrity? Did you do them, you know, as the person that you are and things like that. So, so, it, so it's anyways, it's something that we talk about all the time, but I think you're right. And not a lot of people or households or communities, you know, talk about values per se, um, you know, as important as they are. Yeah. Mine were, uh, creativity was one of them. I love collaboration. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Love is obviously in one in that. And I had like five, um, collaboration. Yeah. Anyway, I, I have a list of about 50 and you narrow them down. Oh my gosh. About yeah. 10 and then you narrow the 10 down to what are your core values and realize that so much of your life oh responsibility is one of them oh uh, yeah that's well I, having ki having six kids in my house that's that's a a topic every hour that we talk about so yeah well, i describe my responsibility as you can take my words to the bank Count sure. Well, I think I think that goes back to integrity, right? That's for me, that's that's integrity. That's, you know, who you are. Yeah, I worked with a guy that uh, when you ask him a question, he kind of look at you and you're like, what what are they wanting to hear? He was oh, a yeah, artist. yeah. He would right. tell you whatever he thought you wanted to hear. Sure, sure. Use car salesman. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get that. So where can somebody find, you know, information about you and some of the work? Well, uh, just uh, you're on, on the social media. So you have a website, uh, SharonRalph.com. Um, yeah, I, I post pretty regularly on Facebook and um, okay. Oh, we lost you there, Sharon. You. <laughs> You're still muted. That's okay. We're gonna edit all this out. Um, I have a book. There on, you go. I have a book on Amazon. Fresh courage. When you go home from vacation, you often go home with fresh courage. I love it. I have it. Finding purpose, essence, and fulfillment. And I make these little art blocks because they're they're full of color. I love color. I love words of wisdom. And oh, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Again, if if you if you knew me, like I'm I'm a kind of an analogy guy every day. I always put things into analogies for everybody. And I think that's because it's like some words of wisdom. Yeah. Uh, my favorite. Uh, oh, here's here's the I'll know the next step once I take the first step. Yeah, I like I'm stealing that one for sure. That's gonna be <laughs> on my on my post tomorrow. <laughs> um, and now all these things could be found on your website. Is that right? Uh, yes. Uh, Amazon. And uh, these are on Etsy. My. Oh, nice. My now, store. Yeah. So oh. what, what, what we'll do is we'll tag everything uh, on this podcast or your Etsy store. Because I think a lot of our members are going to like some of this stuff and just have some kind of daily reminders by their side. I think it's a good a good thing to have. So uh, what keeps us young? Uh, Victoria is exploring the possibilities. I love it. Love and gardening. It's, also, it's reminding <laughs> me of, um, I can't remember the quote, but there's a quote I heard once is something to do with even your very best friends you once met for the first time. And it was all about the fact that at any point in your life, you can make new friendships and you could you can still meet your very, very best friend tomorrow, whatever age you're at. And so oh, I think sure. just like all of all of this, just like remembering that there are possibilities and opportunities for everyone at every age. And, you know, they're really there for the taking is a great message for all of our listeners and members. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm not married yet. I'm still looking for my soul. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure he's out there, Sharon. I'm sure he's out I'm gonna there. Find him. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if you guys want more information about the approach, just go to jointheapproach.com. We're going to link and tag Sharon and all her goodies here uh, below in this podcast. Again, thank you guys so much for joining. Thank you, Sharon, for all your words of wisdom. I know you're going to be inspiring many more people. And hopefully this uh, podcast we'll share will we'll do just that as well. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.